Hello everyone, my name is Ryan and this is a video on installing and using a custom Linux kernel that is designed for gaming and multimedia production. Now in about 99% of Linux distributions out there and it's usually ones that are not based on Arch, the kernel version that is shipped with the ISO will not get updated. Now normally what you tend to find is that that Linux kernel is generic and it doesn't actually affect your game performance per se but there is one huge exception and that's AMD hardware. In particular if you've actually got a newer AMD GPU then you will actually require a, a new, the latest version of the Linux kernel if you want to properly support them and the main reason for that is that the majority of AMD users out there will want to use the open source drivers which are built into the kernel. So in other words if you want the latest drivers for your AMD hardware you really want to be updating the kernel. Now this particular video is actually going to be focusing on a custom Linux kernel called Licorix which is specifically designed for uh, Ubuntu or Debian based distributions. Now their website does actually give a decent overview of what the kernel does in technical details and how it actually differs from a generic one that would normally be shipped with an Ubuntu based distribution. But uh, in layman's terms what you tend to find is using this kernel will make your system more responsive and that's especially prevalent when you're doing multitasking. Now in my own particular testing I found that it made a huge difference to my laptop but I couldn't really see a difference on my, lap my desktop. Still there's not really any downside to using it aside from some extra power consumption. Now for installation there's actually two methods. The first method as mentioned on their web page is to actually install everything through the terminal and it really just involves running two commands in sequence and then rebooting. Uh, the first one is this command here which adds the repository and upstate the system and this one actually installs the the Linux kernel itself plus the Linux header and like I said once you've done that all you need to do is reboot and then you'll be good to go. Now there is a second method and it's the one I'm actually going to be demonstrating in this video and it actually invads, involves adding the repository and install everything using a GUI package manager. Now I will state that the following steps are actually going to cover the vanilla Ubuntu distribution but the underlying principle remains the same. So basically just adopt the steps to match your distribution. So the first step is what we need to do is add the Liquorix repository. So if we open up software and updates, so we'll just do that now, software and updates click on the other software and then we want to click on the add button down here and we want to type in the following uh, deb space http colon slash slash ppa dot launchpad dot net slash demens I think it is uh, liquorix slash ubuntu space focal and then click add source you'll be prompt to type your password in so type your password in and then before we click close on here, we want to make sure we highlight that one, the first one, and click the option that says edit. And then under components, type in main or lowercase. So now we can click close and that will refresh all the repositories for you. Okay, there we go. So now we've added the repository, we need to actually install the kernel. And we're going to use a package manager. Now the one I'm going to use in this video is the Synaptic package manager, but any of the other ones that are available will do the job as well. So let's open up GNOME software and search for Synaptic. There you go. Click install. Once again, it's prompted for your password. And then just let it do its, its business. Right, so that's now installed. So let's launch that. <laughs> Once again, type your password in. And if you didn't get the prompt earlier to update the repositories, you can do it manually by clicking the, re the reload at the top left. And that'll just do the same thing. So now if we do a search, search for Liquorix. And that'll bring you up a long list. So what you want to do is just filter by the latest version at the top and install that. So there's two things you want to install. You want to install the image, so mark that for installation, as well as the Linux header. Once again, mark that for installation 
And then once we've done that, click apply, and then click apply again, and let it go through the motions of installing what it needs to install. Okay, so the process is complete, so all we need to do now is reboot the system, and on reboot, we've now booted into the uh, Licorice or Licorix kernel. Now by default, uh, Ubuntu will actually boot, boot into the most recently installed Linux kernel, which in this case is the one we've just installed. However, if you want the option to switch back to the original kernel, then what we'd need to do is configure the grub bootloader. Now I will note at this point that if you've got a dual boot setup, then this step's already done, so you can actually skip this. And the application we're going to use to manage the grub bootloader is the aptly named grub customizer, which once again can be installed through the GNOME software store. So if we do a search for grub, grub customizer, click install, type in your password, and it shouldn't take too long to install this. Right, so let's launch it. Type your password. And this will actually bring up a list of all the installed kernels plus a couple of recoveries as well. So if you've got several different kernels installed, here's your option to choose which ones you want to boot into. Now by default, if you've only got a single Linux distribution installed, then you won't normally see this appear because it's actually set to be hidden unless you press, I think it's a space bar. However, we can change this. So if you want to go to general settings, go to advanced settings and make sure that the grub timeout style says zero. By default, it will say hidden. So change that to zero. And then the grub timeout is basically how long it takes before it would automatically boot into the, the last kernel you've chosen. So in my case, I've chosen five seconds. So I've pretty got five seconds to touch the keyboard. If not, it would just automatically boot into the previous kernel. So once we've done that, click close, click save, close that down, and then we'll reboot. And I'll show you just briefly what it actually looks like. So there you go, here's, here's the grub now. So if I can touch the keyboard, it would have automatically booted into Ubuntu or the previous one. So as you can see, here's my options here. So I want to choose the licorice. So I choose that, and it will go through the motions of loading up that kernel for you. So the final section we're going to cover is how to actually remove that Linux, uh, Linux kernel if you don't want to use it anymore. It's a fairly straightforward process, and again, we're going to be using Synaptic to remove it. But before we do that, let's, move, let's make sure that we've booted into the original Linux kernel. You do not want to be removing a custom Linux kernel if you're already booted into it, for obvious reasons. So I'm going to reboot, boot into the generic one, and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so I'm back. So let's once again open up Synaptic, type our password in. And we're effectively going to do the reverse of what we did before. So we click for search, type in Licorix. And as you can see, these two marked up as green are installed. So if we highlight both of them, click map for removal, then click apply, and then click apply again. And it will now remove that the Linux kernels from your system. Again, shouldn't take too long to do this. Okay, so that process is complete. So now just to tidy things up, we'll also remove the repository as well. So once again, go to software and updates. Go to the software and then click remove and then click remove, click close and then reload and then we're back to the where we actually started. Now the the liquor liquor rich kernel is actually just one example of a custom Linux kernel that's available out there and especially one that's tailored towards gaming and multimedia production. However, there's many others out there. And my recommendation is have a look at the ArchWiki article on kernel to get an idea of the ones you could try. So, as you can see, if you scroll down to the bottom, you've got quite a few here. The one I personally use is Zanmod. As, but to be honest, I don't really see a difference between Zanmod and uh, Licorix. But it's up to you. You know, try out, try a couple of them out and see what happens. So with that, it brings this video to an end. 
as always, thank you very much for watching. And if you did find this video helpful, please do leave me a like and also subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.